I'm here in the NRA Museum with Nashville Farms Museum Senior Curator Phil Schreier. Phil, I love surprises, and you, you say you have surprises for Curator's Corner, and the surprise, first of all, is we've got a guest. Thank How are you, you sir? I'm finding yourself. I'm doing great. Who's our guest? Our guest is uh, our good friend Tom Ives, who is the Chief Range Safety Officer here at the NRA Range at headquarters, and has been with us as long as the museum's been here, for 14 years, since 19... 98 Tom uh, Tom's been uh, at the NRA range and uh, you know John uh, in the past we've done these antique roadshow style you know appraisals and uh, out of all the guys down at the range Tom's always uh, shown an interest in the in the oddball things that I come up with to shoot down there <laughs> and he always comes over he's like what do you got today well the last time I was down there he came up with something pretty neat and I thought it would make a good curator's corner. So we invited Tom, Tom to come out and, and show us this uh, pretty neat colt that he's got. What do you got there, Tom? Tell us about it. Well, I have a, a Colt uh, 32 New Police. It's a police positive special. It was made in 1968, and it's a pretty rare chambering. Plus, this gun is virtually 100% condition. Uh, it's been unfired. In fact, the only wear that it shows uh, are on the right side where it lay in its box and shifted fi over almost 50 years as the drawer was opened and closed. Uh, the unusual thing about 32 Colt New Police is I understand Colt would, uh, really didn't want to mark their guns Smith & Wesson in any fashion. So it's actually virtually identical to the 32 Smith & Wesson uh, long, uh, but they made a slight change to the projectile and called it the 32 Colt New Police. A little, a little good competition there. How long? That's right. Now, now, Phil, he mentioned a, a very important word there that you've taught me well in the original box. And not only the box, tell us about the box and, and, and wrapper as well. Yeah, it's what we would, what would you would see in the uh, blue book of gun values is described as NIB, new in box. Uh, it has the, uh, the, the box is there, the uh, original oil, oil paper uh, is there with the gun. Uh, you know, we get so many uh, neat things at the uh, appraisals, evaluation seminars that we do. Uh, what I wanted to highlight with this one is, is Tom said, well, I think this is kind of rare. Uh, and it is. And uh, what I did was I contacted our friends at, at Colt in Hartford, and I asked them to put together what would be a Colt letter, which is something we haven't really talked about in the past. Uh, but, you know, the old story of, you know, if I could get this gun to talk, what kind of tales mm -hmm. would it tell? What stories would it tell? And, and for a number of guns, especially of the major manufacturers like Colt, Smith & Wesson, Remington, uh, Winchester, you can get the guns to talk a little bit for you. Uh, so as, uh, you know, with all good collectors, you want to make sure what you're looking at is why it left the factory. And, you know, a Colt letter... Uh, is is available uh, from the Colt archives, and um, I've got one for Tom. Ooh, um, what a surprise, huh? Yeah, it was shipped on uh, June fifth, nineteen sixty eight, uh, with eleven other guns. Uh, it left the factory in in thirty two new police, uh, four inch barrel, uh, blued. Uh, the stocks weren't listed, but obviously the factory stocks, uh, typical of the time. Uh, but this one features a square butt configuration, uh, and that letters that way. But the neat thing about it is, now this is where the value of the letters comes in, uh, is to where it was shipped. And this one was shipped to Caster Line Sports Shop uh, in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, so that tells you exactly where it goes, and you can pick up the trail from there. And, uh, you know, if you go on to, uh, you know, Colt's uh, webpage and look up their archives, it'll, uh, it'll give you a pricing sheet that'll tell you uh, what the different, uh, you know, what the different Colt uh, models and the valuation of the letters. Because uh, a letter uh, can start off, I think, at... Uh, it's $75, and, it, and they can go up to a, a, a couple hundred, mm. depending on the model, because uh, it's an investment, and it definitely adds to the value of your gun if you have one of these letters. Uh, Roy Jinks, our good friend at, at uh, Smith & Wesson, Roy uh, 
Roy still issues uh, factory letters on Smith & Wesson guns. And uh, we're going to talk about a really neat Smith & Wesson later on uh, in the month. But uh, uh, you, can, you can find out, uh, well, as we were talking about it just a few weeks ago, Roy was able to supply us with the uh, paperwork that George Patton originally sent in for his registered magnum in 1935. Uh, so uh, go online, go or go to the Blue Book of Gun Values, and look up the uh, the addresses for the letters. If you have a decent Colt, Winchester, Remington, Ruger, Smith and Wesson, uh, Sharps rifle, a number of these records, Marlins are available, such as at Cody Firearms Museum or at Colt, and. Uh, they like, with Tom's gun now, uh, it has provenance. Tom, did you know where the gun came from before, uh, before I got the letter? Uh, yes, actually, uh, this gun belonged to the father of a friend of mine, uh, deceased, but um, as far as I can tell, it sat in its box its whole life, unfortunately. So you knew, was he from Norfolk? Yes, Norfolk, uh, Virginia area. So it's, it's just had one owner, you know, before Tom, and, uh, and these letters help, you know, establish that. Wow. And they yeah. really add to the value of the gun. Absolutely. Well, thank you, gentlemen. How, Phil, how can folks get here to see, right here to, to Fairfax, Virginia, to see this wonderful museum and maybe stop by the range and visit Tom, too? Well, both, both uh, the range and the museum are accessible off Interstate uh, 66 here in Fairfax, Virginia. Exit uh, 57A. We're open from 930 to 5, seven days a week, where you can find us on the Internet 24 hours a day, seven days a week at nramuseum.org. Phil, Tom, thank you very much for this wonderful surprise segment of the Curator's Corner. Thank you, gentlemen.